Welcome back into the Dallas Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey for the third time today because we have more news to break down around the Dallas Cowboys, this time around the long-expected restructuring of various players' contracts. Three guys announced today, Tyron Smith, Lael Collins, and Zach Martin. Combined, these three are going to save $17 million. Now, the exact restructuring, what money went with which, and just how much of the player's base salary was converted into a signing bonus is not quite yet known, but it's going to come in around these figures. About six for Tyron, about five for Lael, about six for Zach Martin, give or take maybe like a half million. In total, $17 million was saved with these three moves. And to put in perspective how easy this was, there were no fake years added to the back end of these contracts. These, these are already written into deals as the Cowboys simply have to send an email to these players' agents and say, hey, we're doing this. And of course, the players are like, you're taking my base salary and just giving me the, that, that money now? Okay, I'm on board with that. So it makes perfect sense for all parties involved. I do think it is noteworthy. The three players that the Cowboys chose to restructure right now, as opposed to some of the other options they had out there. The Cowboys can still save more money in a heartbeat. They can save Amari Cooper, or, or restructure Cooper, and save $14 million. Demarcus Lawrence, $11 million. Ezekiel Elliott, $7 million. Jalen Smith, seven point two. Chris Jones, $2 million if you cut him. The fact that they did not restructure Zeke and Jalen, and especially Amari Cooper, which they still could, makes me wonder what the futures of those players hold. Because by not restructuring Amari Cooper, you leave the door open next year to potentially trading him if that is a route you want to pursue, especially if maybe you want to play Mike, pay Michael Gallup instead. Not saying that that is a lock. It certainly isn't. But that is worth keeping in, keeping in mind at the back of your mind if you're a Cowboys fan. Now, what do you guys want to do with the cap savings the Cowboys just made? Who do you want to go sign in NFL free agency? Scroll on down to the comments section and get your votes in. If you get the ad break here on YouTube, well, take advantage and let me know. Let's go player by player now for the ones who have been restructured. Tyron Smith, again, for all three players, they turn the salary for this upcoming year into a signing bonus. Player gets all of that right now, and it's spread over the lifetime of the contract that's left up to five years. The Cowboys have loved to do this with Tyron Smith. In fact, this is the fifth time in the past eight years that the Dallas Cowboys have restructured Tyron Smith's contract. In a way, it's been the gift that keeps on giving. That deal that Tyron Smith signed way back when, incredibly team-friendly, due in part, unfortunately, to the off-the-field family stuff Tyron Smith was dealing with because as he cut off his family because of the impact the money had on them. It was just a horrible situation. But this restructure means he's back next year. If the Cowboys were concerned about Tyron Smith retiring or if they were concerned about Tyron Smith's long-term health or cutting him, they would not have done this. This move, as far as I am concerned, as far as you guys are concerned as well, locks in Tyron Smith for the 2021 season. Does something similar with Lael Collins. Same deal, base salary into a signing bonus. Now, Collins this past year missed the entire season due to a hip injury and allegedly may not have been in the best shape, by the way. Might not have been quite 100%, and maybe that led to the hip injury or vice versa. Allegedly. Much like Tyron Smith, not the first time this team has done this. Second time in three years, the team has chosen to restructure his contract to free up immediate cap space. So he's locked in then as your right tackle. Cowboys feel better about him. Apparently doing a good job off the field right now, getting in shape and staying in shape off that hip injury. So that's a good sign there. But are you confident in him and in Tyron Smith? Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Rate this for me on a scale of 1 to 10. What is your confidence level in Tyron Smith and Lael Collins? Rate it for me on a scale of 1 to 10. Now, I think this move by the Cowboys is a clear sign that they trust Tyron and they trust Lael, and they feel good about where those two are at. And as a result, they think those guys are locked and loaded, at least for next year and probably a year after that, if we're being honest here, as the team's bookend tackles. And I wonder if, as a result, maybe going tackle at number 10 
isn't really on the board at that point. So I think that that, that is important for the Dallas Cowboys to keep that in mind that this move is a very clear sign that they trust Tyron Smith, they trust Lael Collins, and they think those two guys are going to be a critical part of this team. They're going to rely on them in 2021, and they feel good about them making a significant impact. The last restructure here, kind of an obvious one, right? Zach Martin, yes, he missed some time last year due to a calf injury, but, you know, whatever. Like, it was a calf injury. There's nothing to really be concerned about long-term with Zach Martin. So much like Tyron, much like Lael, he's locked in. He's ready to go. So at minimum, you know you've got three spots set on the offensive line. And especially as it relates to that number 10 overall pick. I know there's been a lot of buzz about a Rashawn Slater. If Panay Sewell's there, I'd probably do it anyway because he's so good. But I don't want to take tackle at 10. Because, yeah, I can plug him in at left guard, but I probably would have been looking heavier on the offensive line in round one if I were to cut or if Tyron Smith were to retire. Clearly, that's not the case right now. So because of that, not really something I have interest in doing if I were the Dallas Cowboys. So because of these moves, I think that's a pretty clear indication that these guys are key parts of this Dallas Cowboys team next year, probably for a year after that. So in terms of adding a tackle early in the NFL draft, look, if the value is right, okay, I'm on board. Making it your number one overall pick, not sure that's the route I really want to pursue. Now we're going to keep you guys covered on all the news that goes on this Cowboys offseason, the draft, free agency. Maybe we'll even get some trades. So if you want to stay in the know, hit that big red button and subscribe. You see the link bottom of your screen. It's youtube.com slash Cowboys TV. That way you guys don't miss out on any of the videos we're going to do for you guys every single day here at the Dallas Cowboys Report. Another news item, the Cowboys have cut Jameez Olawali, the fullback who did not play in 2020. Now in terms of cap savings, not really a whole lot going on here. It's actually under $1 million unless the Cowboys end up making this a post-June 1st cut that allows them to spread the dead money out over two years. They, they did not indicate that when they made this announcement, so for the time being, I'm going to operate like it is not. Look, Jameez with the wall is on the wrong side of 30. He did not play last year. He's a fullback. Simply put, I don't think the Cowboys wanted him anymore. And I wonder if Olawali will even play in the NFL this upcoming season. This might be more, be more of a procedural move of, yeah, you're not going to play, cool, we're just going to cut you, you can go play somewhere else. Maybe there's some, you know, level of, of, of in-shapeness and competition questions around Olawali because the timing of it is at least pretty interesting. I had suspected he might be a, a uh, roster cut as opposed to a early March cut. So once again, let me know in the comments who you guys want the Dallas Cowboys to cut? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Because for those of you who have been subscribed for a long time, you actually already know the answer to this particular question. Very clearly, it is Chris Jones. And I am starting to wonder if the Dallas Cowboys are doing this to spite me. Because there is zero logical explanation, unless Chris Jones is like an injury guarantee in his conduct, which would actually upset me even more, that the Cowboys haven't cut their punter. Because cutting the punter saves you $2 million. Cutting the punter actually allows you to spend that money. And by cutting your bad punter, you can go with the cheaper, younger, better one. So I don't get it, Cowboys. Just go cut the f punter. It's not that hard. Get it over with. I beg you, please.